Hey everyone, welcome into the latest edition of Wedgewagon brought to you by True Philadelphian Sportscast and Sports Rag, the VidCast portion on my YouTube channel. I'm of course joined here by my normal co-host Andrew as we're going to discuss and preview our Eagles versus the New York football giants on Thursday night football. Great Thursday night football game for folks that are not fans of either of these two teams. We got a one and five team against a 1-4-1 one, and one team. Definitely warms your feathers to uh, want to watch a Thursday night football game if you're not a fan of the Eagles or Giants. Uh, but obviously all of that was sarcasm. Nobody's probably going to be watching this game that is not a fan of the Eagles or Giants. <laughs> but for the most part. Um, but Andrew, how are you uh, doing today, uh, the night before this game against the who are coming off of... Um, an okay game for sure last week. So uh, how do you feel about this game? I feel pretty good. I honestly am. I think, uh, unfortunately, I don't, we didn't get a chance to do the re- a recap episode um, for, the last, for the last game against the Ravens. But <clears throat> if you really look at those, I know you end up losing both the Ravens and Steelers game, and, and obviously you'd rather win those. But if you really take those down, there's a lot of positives to pull away from that. And I really think, I really think you're about to see this team take off. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say going to the Super Bowl, obviously. I'm not going to say that. But I, I think you're going to see some positive weeks this next few weeks, especially against division games. I think you're going to see us take advantage of those. Um, you, everyone wants to complain about Carson Wentz. So let me just sit here and say it's far from his his fault. Uh, whoever wants to rip on Wentz, you gotta you got to find the new spot to rip on because this guy's going out there playing everything he's got, doing everything he can, and really leading this team to – I mean, as close to victories as you can get. Uh, you, you catch a ball from Miles Sanders and uh, High Tower last week. You win that game against the Ravens. I would uh, say it was a split for Wentz, though, because the first three weeks he was making a lot of dumb mistakes that you could literally usually just pinpoint him as being a main reason you lost, where the last three weeks uh, he's been – more of a comeback kid where he has a bad first half, but then the second half so good that his overall game becomes pretty good. Where there's nothing wrong with that because that means he is starting to trend back. It's just now he has to fully, which the Giants are a good team to be able to do that against, put two halves together because the Eagles have not been a two halves team all season. It's either they had a good for the first couple games, first half and not a good second half, or recently bad first halves and good second half. So um, I think uh, now that you have Sanders out especially, he's going to need to up the ante in the first half uh, in order to supplant these, to put his uh, implant on these games, excuse me, because you don't have much of a running attack without Miles Sanders. Yeah, I'll I'll agree to disagree uh, that first part of that, but um, without without Miles Sanders, I really think you're gonna lean on Wentz obviously for a big part of the passing game. Um, you didn't really see Peterson run the ball to Sanders when Sanders was there, so I don't know why he'd start running the ball to Boston Scott here. Uh, so I, I think you're gonna continue to. See, I mean, you saw Wentz kill the division last year. I expect nothing different from it. I think he's gonna go out there and ball. And uh, again, he the, even though they end up losing those two games on, on quote unquote the best two defenses in, in football, uh, Carson Wentz all he did was go out there and drop fifty plus points on those two uh, in the two games combined. Uh, he dropped twenty eight on the Ravens and twenty nine on the uh, Steelers. So all he did was get close close to that um, thirty mark there. So you have defensive stops here and there. You, you kind of lean one way or the other on some of the other plays, you win those games. So that's why I really think I'm very confident going into this game against the Giants. Um, the defense is playing. I don't know. Again, a lot of people want to rip on Schwartz, but all in all, the defense isn't playing too bad. You gave up 30 points last game. I understand that. But if you actually break it down and everything, you only gave up one one scoring drive of over 50-plus yards. So that's just the offense putting the defense in tough spots. And, and again, that's not just on the offense in the sense of, you, know, you go, you're almost out of the game, and you go for it on fourth down on your own twenty or whatever, and you, you couldn't get the first down, so you flip the field there, and you, the defense does a great job in holding Lamar Jackson to a field goal. So I wasn't overly disappointed with the way the defense played. So 
I, I think all, all sides good of the defense. ball. Right? You're seeing some yeah. good things from all sides of the ball, and you're playing a weak Giants team here. I think the Eagles are going to come out and take full advantage of it. The defense has also been pretty split, though, down the middle because you gave up week three, you tied the Bengals, uh, who have been, a, don't get me wrong, they've been a good scrappy team this year, but you still should have been able to beat the Bengals. Uh, and they don't score that that's, much. That's, so a, you, that's a team loss. And then um, you gave up 37 to the Rams, so that's obviously not a good defensive week in week two. And obviously... 27 to Washington is a very bad defensive week because their offense is pretty bad. Uh, so yeah, but you, you uh, got again. You got to be careful with how you take that because then the offense is giving them the other team the ball on the the 30 20 yard line. And you're only giving up 20 yards. You can't fully blame the defense for that. Yeah, but I still think overall that Washington game one our team played bad overall. Like. Uh, so I would say that might be more an overall loss, but still, no matter how, giving up 27 to the Redskins is inexcusable, or the Washington football team, since they, since they don't have a name anymore. Um, where the Rams giving up 37 to a team that, if they're clicking, can score a lot, but they haven't done that in consistently in about two years. They've been doing it in spurts, and they showed it against us. They haven't been the Rams of when Sean McVay first got there for his first two years of being consistent, like 28 and up, like almost just clicking, clicking. So that wasn't the best uh, defensive week at all. Um, That wasn't the best week at all, but especially uh, giving up that many points. We got pretty down early there. And then Bengals, 23 points isn't a lot, but to the when you had chances to win that game, that just wasn't as good of a of a um, spot there. Where the 49ers, we played decent defense, but they had their backup in, so you can't judge much off of that game. The Steelers game was, I think, our worst defensive game. Um, because, yes, Roethlisberger's really solid still, but he's not who he used to be, and the Steelers' offense is not what it was when they had Brown and everybody in there with the injuries that they also have had to certain pieces. Like, the issue you did there is we made Chase Claypool look like the second coming of Randy Moss. So uh, the that's why that didn't work. So Chase Claypool's a heck of a wide receiver, but that was a pretty bad defensive week because you couldn't stop one guy no matter who you put on him. So... That's why I mark that as our worst defensive. Where last week, I think, was our scrappiest defensive week because after we had a horrendous first half overall, not just, not like on one side, just like the overall team does not have a good first half. Um, but the, the defense really kept you in that game. Back. So- we really battled back, and they scrapped with Jack. I mean, the, the, the defense was scrappy like i'm not going to say our defense played great yesterday they were they were good but they 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 were scrappy because you still gave up you limited lamar's passing yards but you gave up over 100 rushing yards still so i mean you still gave up a lot of yards in a capacity to lamar jackson so you really didn't per se limit him so uh because he had a rushing td and a throwing td so he still did what we did a really good job was was limiting the rest of their rushing attack, which has been good against other teams in either Dobbins or Edwards. Uh, but that also helped that Ingram got injured. I don't know how that would have weighed if a guy that has had good games against us in the past actually was playing. Um, and then Brown did good again. but And then Boyle did good against us as well. But other than those guys, they did solid. I think the issue is... The, the Eagles played good defensively, but they lost that game just because the Ravens have that playmaker on their team that was able to get them in position for that one extra score because that's all that game took. It was a two-point game. And when you have a guy like Jackson who, knock on wood, hasn't had injuries yet and can run like a running back, even when you can't pass because – the defense is stopping your best receivers other than Brown. Um, 
you're able to run for a hundred and some yards. So that he's always been able to get them into position, uh, and he was able to get them in position just one extra time than us, and that was really the deciding factor. It wasn't that the defense played bad; it's just that you got beat by one of the NFL's best playmakers. That's really what that came down to. You it came yeah, and down. That's to something the Giants that don't have in this game. So that's, yeah. that's again, that's why I think the Eagles will be fine in this game because the Giants don't have that playmaker. They're missing their best. No, 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 no. They're missing their best offensive player. The receivers don't scare me a whole lot, if I'm being honest. And Daniel Jones isn't. I mean, I I think we can come in here and and uh, really get a hold of this Giants team. Um, yeah, the one guy you got to watch is Slayton because if if you can leave somebody open across the middle, he'll start feasting on you like Claypool did a little bit. So you have to make sure you key you stay on him. If you start leaving him a few inches of space, uh, Darius Slayton's going to take advantage of you, but. Because uh, Barkley's out, you're absolutely right. That takes a huge effect on them. But another guy that's hurt us when he was on the Falcons, a guy that we have to make sure we can stop too in the rushing game is Devontae Freeman, who has looked all right since he's gone to the Giants. So uh, you want to? We have to remember that he's a talented back when he's actually starting healthy and is able to zone it in and everything. So. Uh, we'll see what he'll be able to do. But in terms of receiving, it's really just mainly, other than Evan Ingram, when he's healthy at tight end, uh, it's basically Darius Slayton. Because Golden Tate has his mixed in weeks, and I guess you would wonder if uh, he would have a good week against us, maybe. But, I mean, usually it's been Slayton um, and pretty much uh, just Slayton and um, what's his name? Uh, I just I just said his name a minute ago and then blank on it already. Devontae uh, Freeman. No, not Devontae Freeman. Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram. There we go, yeah. Slade, because I was talking about receivers. Um, because Ingram's more of a receiver-type tight end than he is of a structural, regular tight end. So he's been a big guy. That's hurt us in the past. Stop him and Sladen, and you're pretty much set. Because I don't think Devontae Freeman at this point of his career should be a game crusher. If you focus on two other people, you just have to also focus on him. You just should mainly focus on stopping the bigger tight end that you have to match up against because we don't have the biggest defenders of to stop a receiving tight end like Ingram and then put somebody else that you want to have, whoever you want to have on Slayton, whether that's Slay or if you want to have Slay on the tight end and move on from there. You have to make those decisions. But that's the only two players that concern me the most, I would say, on their offense. But we have to keep in mind that Daniel Jones has to be accurate and actually having a solid game like he did last week where he ran for a decent amount of yardage and actually managed the game fairly well. Or is he going to be erratic? So that plays a big factor into what those other guys can do anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, they're nothing to drive home about. They're a little better in the rush defense, I think, than the pass defense, in my opinion. So, again, yeah, I'm going to look to Wentz here. I think Wentz is going to have to be come out strong in this game, get the, get out to an early, early lead, and just don't take your foot off the gas like we did in the Redskins game. Uh, get out, jump out to a 14 nothing lead, which I think you can do. And then um, just keep driving, keep put, keep putting the pressure on them. Uh, I don't expect anything else in this kind of game. You're going, you're home against this team, uh, a weaker team, and we'll see what happens. But you bring up Devontae Freeman, I, I feel confident in the Eagles stopping them. We did in the playoff game against the Falcons. Uh, Eagles defensive line has been tremendous the last few weeks uh, for the most part, um, especially against these type of quarterbacks and everything like, Lamar Jackson might be able to beat you because he's quick to get out of the pocket and stuff. But against these guys that are more pocket passers, the Eagles have been able to get get to them. And and obviously, top one of the top teams in the league in sacks. So I expect uh, expect the same thing here. Expect a, a big day from the defensive line and be able to help this offense get 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 going. I think the defense will uh, force a couple turnovers because of that line pressure that you saw in the 49ers game. And uh, same thing. I think you turn those tur- uh, turnovers into points. No, that makes sense to me. What amazes me so much when you look at stacks is 
Uh, this is just a fun thing I wanted to bring up because it's going to go into a defense stat. Is where people are ranked with numbers that are not far off. <laughs> like, for example, the Eagles defense gives up per game so far 378.8 total yards, and, that, and they did go up against a pretty hefty schedule other than one week uh, so far, um, where that's ranked 17th, according to score, where the Giants have a 361.5 total yards, which is really not a astronomical gap. That's like that's potentially just one good play gap. Then they're ranked eleventh. <laughs> like, like that's I it just I just find it funny. Yeah. That's why when you use the ranking numbers, sometimes it can be deceiving because the actual stat numbers are so close. Like someone could be ranked fifth, the other team could be ranked tenth. Meanwhile, their numbers are separated by seven. Yeah, and then we have teams bunched up and tied. That pushes everyone that back, too. So you might have four teams tied for third, and then that means the next team is going to be technically uh, what fourth. eighth or ninth. Yeah. Yeah, eighth yeah. or ninth, but really this should be about the fourth, but just because there's so many teams tied. Oh, then, I get what you're saying. Okay, yeah, it's so like if, if, if there's – if me and you are tied for third, that means the next team is going to be fifth because three, four, or five, but in reality – so, if you have five teams tied at third, and that next team is going to be technically nine. Yeah. Now, what you got to take advantage of the Giants with is the Eagles also, the one thing they need to get better with is getting off the field at times that they've been better with in recent weeks, but they're 19th with their third down percentage at 43.5. That's been trending downwards, so that needs to keep trending downwards because you can't keep giving up first downs on third down. Uh, you do all that work on the first two downs just to give up a first down. That mm. doesn't work. Well, the Giants are the terrible at that because they're ranked 30, 31st and give up a first down on third downs 53.8% of the time. So if you do get to third downs on this team, if you're going to actually be able to get going a bit on them and maybe mix in like how they do those out arounds to Greg Ward because they're rushing defense – it gives up about 100.5 per game, which is somehow ranked eighth. Um, so, I mean, if you're able to get some of those out around runs that we mix in pretty smartly, and you're able to get going and eat up clock, you got to get in good third down situations against the Giants if you're ever going to be in them. You can't be in third and long because you know, even if you're within third and seven, probably against the Giants you have a decent chance of picking it up with that stat. I mean, yeah. 53, like that's almost 54% of the time on third down, they give up a first down. That's really bad. <laughs> that, yeah, that so there not, you're going to have to take advantage of. You're absolutely right. Like, I was really surprised when I looked at that. I'm like, did, I'm like, did someone type that in wrong? Is that supposed to be like 35% or something? Like, what's going on here? Um... The other thing is the Giants' one win they got this season was at home. We're, of course, at home for this Thursday night game tomorrow. Um, So this is against a team with the Eagles that, of course, have their tie at home, but their win on the road. This is the game that they're looking to get their first, first home win, and I think both of us believe this is the first game all season other than the first game of the season that did not work out swimmingly for me. Uh, But other than that, that I've been fully confident going in, okay, I think we're going to win this game. The other game's just been like, my week's going well. I've had a good week. The week's been fine and dandy. The Eagles win, it's a bonus. (laughs) Where (laughs) this week I'm like, cool, I think we actually have a chance to win. Yay! (laughs) Um, So that's why I feel this is going to be our first home win, and I know you – think that but i'm going to ask to you what are your three keys you think that are going to get us our first home win against the giants on thursday the i believe it would be the 20 so yeah thursday the 22nd of october yeah i think real quick for some final stuff um before that i you getting i don't want to use this as one of my keys to the game but you're getting key guys back, and Deshaun Jackson and Lane Johnson are, are going to be returning. So I think that's going to be a tremendous help to this 
offense. You're going to get Matt Pryor back as well. They activated him today from the COVID list. So, again, two and big... he's been solid. Yeah, and he's been playing better than yeah. people would expect, yeah, including solid. myself. So, you get some protection back there. You get and one of your weapons yeah, in the Sean Jackson back. So, um, again, I can use it as one of my keys to the game, but that's key things that's going to help uh, win there. Um, yeah. So, my, my first real key to the game is going to be... Well, before uh, you give the keys, because I forgot, since you brought up people that are going to be back, can you give the injury report real quick of people that are going to be yeah. out and then give your keys? Yes. Yeah. So, the injury report is uh, out is Jack Driscoll, off, uh, the offensive tackle. Um, the, he was a first-round pick. Zach Ertz, uh, Malik Jackson on the defensive uh, end, Alshon Jeffrey, uh, Miles Sanders, and Kevon Wallace are all the guys out. Limited at practice and questionable is Avante Maddox and Duke Riley. And then full participants at practice expected to play are Marcus Epps, Deshaun Jackson, and Lane Johnson. Gotcha. So, obviously, you're missing some key guys there. Zach Ertz, Malik Jackson, um, Alshon Jeffrey, and Miles Sanders. And, you know what, even Wallace, he was playing well, too, for the most part. So. Especially on special teams. Yeah. And even Jack Driscoll, he's had to step up with injuries, and he hasn't done – I mean, obviously, he's not better than some of your starters, but he hasn't done bad in some of the fill-in role for his first year. So, I mean, all of it's kind of keys at this point for the Eagles, but at least you're getting uh, – two key guys back and then hopefully Epps, Riley and Maddox are able to get back out there as well to help in that passing situation. Yeah. I don't think before the season I would have been thinking with, if uh, we got that one extra secondary piece, I would have been saying, man, I really need Marcus Epps to come back to help with my passing. <laughs> like, he was one yeah, of the but guys. He also, I feel like he's always done stuff on the special teams too, though. Oh, he has. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. He's one of the better special teams yeah. guys in the NFL. I'm just talking about from the other part of your statement about passing defense. If we actually had that one extra person to back defend, rather than a bunch of people that are great in the slot, um, that would be that you wouldn't have to worry about that as much. But I will say, Epps has played better than I thought. A guy that's not playing great, but is playing better than I think we all thought is Singleton. Because he's been really good on special teams and solid enough at linebacker. Because yeah. he shouldn't be playing as much as he's playing, so you can't fault him for the mistakes he makes because he's getting overexposed. Uh, he's not supposed to be playing nearly as much as he is. He came from the XFL and then came back to playing. So uh, since you brought up some guys to give props to, I will give props to them too. But what are your uh, two other keys then? Well, I didn't, I, my, I didn't even give a key yet. Oh, that well, wasn't a key. I thought that was part of your. Okay, I thought that was one of your keys that you were saying about. No, I was just saying it's not like a key to win because obviously it helps to get players back. But I was just saying that's it's like I guess te- I guess it technically is a key. <laughs> I'll give that to you. Um, so I guess the returning injury guys, we'll put there. Um, definitely in the passing game. Excited to see Deshaun Jackson there rather than some of the other guys that have been dropping passes left and right. Um, Carson B. Carson, that's my second key. Um, I definitely, I, I've been defending him since the first game of the season. I think you're definitely seeing improvement throughout the season, uh, in all areas of his game, basically. And I think he's going to continue it. Um, again, you just went up against three, three of the top defenses in the 49ers, Ravens and, uh, Steelers. And all he did was go out there and ball and, uh, just be, be himself, find ways to win the game. And I think he'll do just that. And then I guess my third and final key would be win, win the line battle. That's offensively and defensively. Um, Giants don't have a horrible pass rush, so you're going to have to get some good uh, guys on the offensive line there. And then on the defensive line, again, same same exact story as the 49ers game. Get through their line, which you, you're going to be able to do. Giants don't have a good offensive line. Get through to them. Force Daniel Jones to rush passes and get un- uncomfortable, and, and you that'll make you win the turnover battle. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Carson... Um... I think, like I said, uh, he needs to be a little bit better at the start of games and not come on as much at the end of games, which I think 100% is going to happen against the Giants. Um, So that's why I said this is a perfect game to really get clicking for a full 60 rather than just a period of the game. So that's uh, 
a big thing. One of my keys you might not like as much, but I do just because I think they finally got their heads out of their butts and figured out how to use this guy not like a bunch of idiots. Uh, and that has been Jalen Hurts the last two weeks. He completed the one pass in Pittsburgh, and then he had two really nice run plays against, again, like you said, a top defense in the NFL. The thing with Hurts that I think was causing him to fumble, honestly, in the NFL was he's a guy that runs the option. You know how some quarterbacks, like how they time, how they have all those time stats. One of them is like how quick they pull back the ball. Hurts is one of those guys that runs it how, like how you're supposed to. He keeps it in the running back stomach for about two seconds or so and then pulls it where I think Sanders and other backs were getting thrown off from that, that when you went back and looked at those plays, you would see that it would almost get batted out because they didn't seem they were as used to that. So I think now that they got the difference of the two quarterbacks, like how Wentz does that compared to Hurts, it seems like they're good now. And I think with the Giants – running those mixed option plays, especially with D-Jack back, because him and Hurts have been airing it out in practice as a play that I think it was, I can't remember who brought it up on Twitter, but one of the reporters brought that up on Twitter, that there's a chance that you could see that play maybe, the play where they run a play that looks like Jalen Hurts is going to run and then D-Jack might be wide open down the field. Um so there's, I think, him mixing in against a team in the Giants that doesn't have a putrid run defense. They're actually just like, okay, like solid. You might want to mix in those unique runs with Hurts, and then I think that also um, can help the offense when you mix it in like you did against Baltimore where it's at the right times and like you did against the Steelers where it was at the right times and not in the first few weeks where it was kind of in a weird part of the game. So... I think that's uh, one thing for me. Um, I do think Carson has to limit the one big mistake throw per game. That's the one thing I will say. He usually each week, which is the reason he has nine interceptions when he hasn't had more than seven since his rookie year, I think, um, is every week so far he's made that one throw that you're just like, what in the Sam heck was that? Like, and it's not like it interferes with the whole rest of the game necessarily all the time. It's just that's the one thing I think he needs to improve on and would be a key in this game because we saw in the game against Washington, who have terrible quarterbacking, uh, the Giants were able to get going by momentum plays by their defense. So you don't want to give them any momentum plays by their defense. So I would say making not like being the Wentz that we saw at the end of last year, that was not making any mistakes, didn't turn the ball over at all. Doing that will also be a key to keeping this game where it should be, which the Eagles, if they have the one of their best weeks of the season, which this should be their best week of the season, could win by a look like 10 points in this game rather than if Wentz is off in that aspect and gives the Giants momentum defensive plays, you might have to win by a field goal or get a late touchdown. Uh, the, the, the Giants, from how they seem to play this year, from watching red zone and different things and just having their games on as one of the games at other time, they seem to build their momentum off of their defense a heck of a lot more than their offense. So you can't make any mistakes there, and you also have to not make mistakes with your young running backs. That's that was a, That's like a two-part key for my second key. Wentz can't make that one mistake throw, and you have a bunch of inexperienced running backs other than Clement, who doesn't really, he's kind of experienced, but doesn't really have experience because he doesn't run a lot. He just had a great Super Bowl game that we adore him and thank him and will love him for for life. Uh, but like he, you have guys that have fumble issues. Like These guys have all sometimes had fumble issues in his backs. You have to. That was the second part key. Whoever's going to step up and take the bigger role for Sanders has to be able to hang on the ball. And I'm going to be interested to see if that becomes Boston Scott or if the Eagles get a guy like someone that comes off of the squad that's like a little bit bigger of a back that they brought up, and then all of a sudden one of those guys like a Holyfield, a Huntley, a Killians, or somebody that has more size of them start running and actually look half decent for two weeks. Like I would be because Scott obviously is not the size of a running back you want carrying 
a decent um, like even like more than like probably five or six times a game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I hear so. you. And that's why we people thought we should have went out and got Defonte Freeman in the off season. We're signing Le'Veon Bell when the when the Jets cut him. You had opportunities to get a good backup, and they just didn't want him. Yeah, that, that that's been confusing to me too. Maybe we're planning on putting Jalen Hurts at running back. Um, that'd be a very interesting situation. Uh, but uh, I think my third and final key would be. Um, exactly. You kind of said it too, but I would say consistent, um, play from the defense as well, where you said it more in line play where like you have to have plays where you don't let Daniel Jones, who we know isn't what the giants thought he would be at least at this point, but is athletic and has had a couple runs this year of more than like five and change yards. He had that big run last week where he got outside there you want to make sure you limit him in all capacities he does have over 200 rushing yards so you don't want to let him be able to pick up first downs with his legs at all either so just be continuously consistent uh you can get this kid into turnover issues if you can like you said supply the pressure so i think the keys would be trying to generate some turnovers as well which is something you kind of uh hit it at as well because daniel jones at least for now, has been a guy that turns over the ball a lot in his young career. Mm-hmm. So those would be my three keys. But that about well, brings us to the end in our thirty minute mark here. I don't know if you had any uh, final closing points for this episode. Now nah, my my final point was uh, Eagles win this game thirty one to I go I'm gonna go thirty one sixteen Eagles win this game. Um, again behind great play from. Carson Wentz, and I think the defense forces a couple turnovers, gets some easy points for the offense. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with the Eagles win. I don't normally do score predictions because they're never right, but uh, I'll go uh, 28-17, I guess. Uh, I'll go with that. Why not? Um, The Giants kicker has been one of their uh, guys that has been pretty good if you're on fantasy because they don't score often, so... If they get in position, they're probably going to kick. Uh, so uh, I would go uh, 28-17. I'll go with the Birds. But this has been the Wentz Wagon pregame edition to the Eagles and Giants Thursday night football game tomorrow night as we get going on Thursday, October 22nd for Andrew Santangelo, who you can follow at AJ underscore Santangelo on Twitter. I'm Joe Boric. You can follow JJ Boric 26. This has been Wentz Rag and pregame edition. Have a great, safe, and pleasant week, everybody. Go, birds. Fly, Eagles, fly. Peace out, everyone.